So we're going to talk about today why preppers are perceived as nutcases. And the, the reason why is, is quite simple. Um, you see, fear and paranoia, these are mechanisms which are helpful in the survival of an isolated organism. Okay, in an organism that's not a pack-minded organism or an organism that is not in a group or a herd, you know, that organism has to be constantly on edge because it is the only thing that is protecting it. It can't trust anything, okay? If you look at a deer, uh, a deer in the woods, you know, one little crack of a branch and that the ears are up, you know, and it's looking all around and it's spooked, it's ready to run. It gets in a postures that it's ready to run. And that's primarily because they don't travel in herds. Now I know some deer travel in herds, but for the most part, they're a solitary animal. There are some deer herds and deer farms and stuff like that where they, they tend to take on a herd mentality. By and large, there's a lot of animals out there that are solitary animals. And as preppers, we tend to be very independently minded people solitary people and that comes with that is the underlying survival mechanism which is the lack of trust okay the lack of trust in people in authority in particular there's a fine line between creativity genius and insanity and oftentimes preppers oscillate between these two now you're going to find people in the preparedness community across the iq spectrum across the EQ spectrum, the street smart spectrum, and across what I call the FQ spectrum, which is the rebellious spectrum. You know, the, the free man of the land slash, and that's where the, the anarchist and the libertarian really meet. You know, the, even like the hardline progressive anarchists and the hardline libertarian who don't believe in hierarchy and government, you know, that's where they, they kind of unify around those principles. Now, the problem arises though with people who believe every single thing that they come across which runs counter to what they perceive to be the mainstream media. It is very healthy to be inquisitive and to be constantly inquisitive and to constantly try to weigh your options. Ultimately, yeah, you're gonna have to take a side. That's obvious. When it comes down to the wire, we will have to take a side, no matter how Socratic we try to be with things. Like it's one thing to entertain an idea. It's another thing to entertain ideas and then just run with it like it's the gospel. Okay, and this is something that I have to keep beating like a dead horse because somebody made the comment on my channel the other day, you know, I see the wildest comments in your comment section. And they're referring to the fact that there's a lot of unhinged, fringy type comments. For instance, I made that video about the, the winter storm just the other day. Uh, there were so many comments about geoengineering and all this stuff, and they weren't just like, hey, you know, I wonder if that's geoengineering, which in itself is kind of <laughs> not really a, a well-substantiated theory. Uh, even, even if it was, yes, we know that cloud seeding exists. Okay, these are not new things. Okay, we know that geoengineering is a thing. That's why there's a word for it. But to ultimately go to, that's the cause of that particular event. And not only that, but just to say it definitively, <laughs> like that's geoengineering, you know, that's just cloud seeding. Like for people to say it like that, that to me is a sign of ignorance. I understand why we need to have that independent mindset and be distrusting of the mainstream, but some preppers just go too far, okay? And it's not just preppers, but Prepping tends to overlap. If you have one of those, was it a Venn diagram? You know, there's a big overlap with alternative theories of how the world works and preparedness. And that's not surprising at all, because like I said, there's a lot of very independently minded people in the preparedness community, which is why it's primarily a Western practice. I mean, if you go into uh, Middle Eastern countries or you know, any country really outside of Europe, you know, there's a far more uh, community oriented society you'll find because people in other countries tend to be more tribalistic. They value the family and the extended family. And of course that's being demoted here. And I'm speaking in generalizations. So obviously there's exceptions to these rules. There's people who have groups, prepping groups, large groups, you know, full on tribes of people, communities, villages, hamlets 
of people who prep together. But they're the exceptions, okay? The majority of preppers are people who are very just generally distrusting. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? What irritates me the most is when somebody in their holier than thou smug attitude, you know, comes on and tries to trash talk preppers, but they spend the better part of their day with all the, the vanity and the shallow materialism that they use to define their existence. You know, like they spend the majority of their time watching these happy-go-lucky trending videos, and then they come on and diss preppers for wasting their time doing what they're doing, even though, you know, their contribution to the human race is no greater, arguably. Um, if anything, it, it's, if shit hits the fan, it's arguably going to be worse because they're going to be part of the problem. And, you know, the urban prepper Cliff often alludes to this. He says it one time in every video, it seems, and it's like someday, you know, preppers might get, get cancelled. And I got to think to myself, you know, like, why would that be? You know, because there's a lot of us who, you know, we walk the line. You know, we don't put out uh, exceptionally edgy content, things which tend to challenge the main narratives as to what's going on. We will challenge them a bit, but not to the point where we're perpetuating falsehoods on the masses. But the well-oiled machine that our increasingly globalized world is, it does not value individualism. And part of it is that we live in a disposable society. The goal is not for you to store energy, because then of course you're a hoarder or you're a paranoid stockpiler, uh, and not to be self-reliant, but to at all points be connected to the system and be reliant on the system. Because the more everybody is reliant on it, uh, the stronger that system becomes, okay? But if you're doing your own thing in the back country, you know, and they don't know what you're doing, and you know, then you be potentially become a liability. And I was thinking the other day about these masks that we're wearing. And I'm all about wearing masks. I think it makes sense. I know there's, there's lots of contradictions, but it's all about minimizing the spread, okay? It's not about eradicating. If it was, then they would be telling everybody to wear actual uh, respirators and N100 or N99 or a full-on gas mask, full-face respirator. That's what they would be telling if it was about stopping it or truly preventing it, but it's really about minimizing. So even if you just, you know, wear your mask half-assed around town, and you know, uh, wear it in between bites at a restaurant, it's still minimizing the spread. So I understand the logic. That the logic is, is that yeah, even though some of these rules can seem kind of stupid, ultimately it's going to lead to less casualties. That's what it means. And I get that. But I was also thinking about the de-individuating nature of the mask. And I thought about the parallels between like Islam and you know, the veil and how you know, we all kind of look like that now. And that's not like a conspiracy theory or anything, but it's just how it de-individuates us and you can't see somebody for who they truly are, at least in the physical flesh. Now, some people would say that's a great thing because then you're, you're interacting with people just on the basis of their personalities and their in intellect and other things that you might like about them that go beyond the flesh, fine. Uh, but I still think at the same time, it's, it's antithetical to prepping because prepping is about individuality, which is not to say, well, it's funny with prepping though, because you know, we should be the ones who are wearing the, the biggest masks that conceal most of our face. Uh, yet there's a lot of people in the preparedness community who are very critical of this right now. We don't need to substantiate our prepping by subscribing to every fringed out idea out there. Okay. And you can entertain those ideas, like I say, but, to think that you need to, um, it almost seems like some people think they have to have that to justify their preparedness. You don't. There's 50,000 legitimate reasons to prep. And really you only need one <laughs> to be justified at the end of the day. I mean, think about a martial artist who spends their entire life training day after day after day. Some of them never, probably most of them never get in a real fight or a real scuffle their entire life where they had to fully implement that martial art, but it doesn't stop every single day. Think about how many people go to the gym every single day, just for what, for that one off chance that something might happen so that they can be ready for it. 
Nobody faults him for that, just like nobody faults the martial artist. Nobody faults the guy who spends all his money and time watching stupid movies or playing video games or playing sports. So you really don't need any justification to prep when it comes down to it, other than that it's something you want to do and it's a free country. But if you do need something, there's plenty of things that you should be preparing for, especially now. I'm not even going to start listing them off. You guys know what they are. Just go and watch my last 50 videos or just look at the thumbnails and that should give you an idea what you should be preparing for. Brings me to this next point that prepping is about to change in a big way. You see, the people who never prepped before are starting to warm up to the idea. And the people who are prepping for like Armageddon, full on Armageddon, they're recalibrating now to what an SHTF situation would really look like. It's not going to be some abrupt thing that happens right away and the zombies burst out onto the streets and you're suddenly in survival mode. You know, this is a gradual incremental decline that we're seeing. I'm not saying that those abrupt scenarios can't happen, just that they're rather unlikely. So what's happening then is a refining of preparedness right into the middle. Does Trump do this thing? This was the reality check I think preparedness needed because now we're going to find most of these people meeting in the middle, the people who made fun of preppers before and the people who maybe prepped a little too hard before are both coming closer to the center and hopefully finding some common ground there. Now, I don't make this video to try to convince you of anything. If anything, I make this video to try to distance myself from, from that fringe group who believes everything because they dominate my comments on my videos. And I appreciate having them as viewers and followers. And I don't know if they're just getting there through the algorithm and they don't really subscribe to the channel, but that's where I stand on preparedness, okay? Uh, there's very real threats to our existence on this planet. And what more justification do you need? You know, we don't need any more justification. Look, I've noticed that there are some people who are very, very smart, but in other ways they're really stupid or just really naive. And I'm talking about academic book smarts, intellect smarts, people who across all the, the measures available will score very high in terms of intelligence. What made me think about this was I was watching the Lex Friedman podcast. Maybe some of you guys know who that is. He interviews some pretty prominent members of the intellectual dark web, as it's called. Elon Musk and others. And um, he's talking to this guy named Brett Weinstein and Brett Weinstein's trying to explain the Epstein situation to him. And Weinstein's like, uh, he's an academic, okay? Everything the guy says is substantiated by science. Like he's as academic as it gets, okay? He works in a university, he does research. I think he's, a, I don't know if he's a physicist, chemist, something in some natural science anyways, researcher. And uh, he's trying to tell him like, look, the term conspiracy, uh, the stigma that's attached to that is not well-founded. It's, it's baseless because conspiracies are everywhere in nature. The whole capitalist system is built on conspiracy. You conspire with your spouse when you're planning on what to do in your retirement. You know, you're not gonna tell everybody all your secrets, your financial secrets. So conspiracy is kind of the backbone that drives the free market. So to, to subscribe to this negative connotation of conspiracy is stupid. Like it's really dumb it, it, when it comes to it, it, why that's analytically and logically false. Yet this guy, Lex Friedman, who's very intelligent in his field, he's got a black belt in jujitsu. He's an artificial intelligence uh, programmer at the edge of his field. I mean, this is a smart guy and he interviews philosophers and metaphysicists and all manner of, you know, people who have really made huge contributions to the world of academics and just science in general. Yet he was so naive about this one concept that, you know, conspiracy, the, the dirtiness of the word is not justified. It's just like the word intercourse, like intercourse is not just about sexual intercourse. Intercourse is a word that stands on its own outside of like intercourse. I can't remember the exact definition of it, but it doesn't just mean screwing. Intercourse means other things besides that, a more broader uh, intersecting of different courses. I, I don't know. 
So he was trying to tell Lex, like, look, the, the stigma against conspiracy is kind of bullshit because, you know, you can just basically then sweep anything under the rug by saying, oh, that's just a conspiracy theorist. And when people come on videos and they, they write that kind of stuff, which is easily debunked, okay, like easily debunked, it puts us in that basket and it lends itself to the unwarranted, unjustified charge that you, your opinion doesn't matter or that what you're saying is false simply because you're a conspiracy theorist, right? Even though what you're saying, you know, might not be that far out or it might just not be a part of the common narrative. And we've seen this countless times this year where, you know, the preppers were saying, hey, this is what's going to happen. Like we talked about the market crash, okay? We talked about um, stockpiling up before, you know, the panic buying started. We talked about masks. We talked about the second wave. All these things which are coming true, the riots, the looting, all that stuff. And it's not until it's accepted by the masses that suddenly it's not stigmatized anymore. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of stupid people on that side of the fence too. And that's why I say there's a fine line between genius and insanity. It's very challenging to find people who are in advanced in an academic sense and also have the capability to think critically in just the right amount before going off the deep end and just opening yourself up to every single idea and believing anything just because you, you know, you heard some guy say it and there was scary music in the background. So in the case of Lex Friedman, he has a really specialized body of knowledge, but he's not a Renaissance man in the sense that I think a lot of preppers are kind of Renaissance men in the sense that they're trying to do it all, even though nowadays it's just, you can't do it all. You know, it's just, things are too specialized which is why we regress to using more primitive uh, ways of survival because it's something we can manage. I mean, I can't start a factory farm from nothing, you know what I mean? But I can go and buy a cow and put them on you know, a, a pasture and just use that one cow, but I can't create the whole operation. So as preppers have a broader knowledge base, but it tends to be not as deep, even though there's a lot of preppers who have careers and they specialize in certain things. And there are indeed some of those people, not all. I mean, I'm not talking about everybody here. I'm just talking about the average person. So I'm trying to be fair here and criticize both sides. On the one hand, yeah, preppers get a little crazy sometimes. But on the other hand, yeah, these people who didn't prep before, they're very complacent in their thinking oftentimes, even if they are very intelligent you know, and they mean well, and they're conscientious about their actions, and they want to do good in the world. They want to have a positive impact. See, there's a lot of smug academic people who they really do mean well, and they actually, a lot of what they say is true, but they lack real world experience, which is why in coming from that domain of academia where people think they're really open-minded, but they're actually kind of closed-minded. And what I say at the end of the day is that you should be an honest seeker of truth. And I listen to a lot of really highly articulate uh, people who can just, when they talk, it's like you're reading a book or something. Like the, the way they talk, they're so uh, well-spoken and they have such massive vocabularies that they can just you know, unleash on people like a lot of these political pundits. And it's like, how do they do that? And they do it all day and they just talk and talk and talk. But what you'll find is that they lack, they tend to, not all the time, but they tend to lack a certain wisdom about things. And you know they're in the process of becoming, but because they think they're right, their, their development is kind of arrested in that respect, which is why uh, lots of these political, political pundits only lead me so far until I'm like, yeah, you know, you're just a little too confident in your opinions for me to follow. Uh, at the same time, I appreciate that you exist. I appreciate that there's a right and a left that I can weigh the options of. If there was no conservatives and when there was no liberals, then there'd be a problem. But now, of course, we're divided more than ever before. And I think there's more dichotomy than just liberal and conservative. There's a lot of things, okay? Anyways, I'm kind of rambling on a bit, but that's why people think preppers are crazy because of the fact that 
naturally people who are distrusting they have i don't know if it's a genetic thing maybe even it's possible it's possible it's genetic and that all preppers and survivalists have this um this gene which is making them very suspicious of the world around them more so than perhaps is healthy in some respects all i would say is you know entertain ideas just don't run with them right away right when you hear them and uh, i really think that this experience that we're sharing together in 2020 and 2021 because this is only going to get this is, i have i today was the first time in a long time i looked at the numbers and i felt like oh man this is this is about to blow in a bad way in like uh in like one of those bad movie type ways Speaking of bad movies, I started watching this movie on Netflix. It's called Into the Forest or something. It's a TV show, apocalyptic TV show, and it's just terrible. Like they steal the music from 28 Days Later. It's like a blatant ripoff and it's made in Russia and it's overdubbed and it, it had so much potential, but it just lost me. Anyways, it's about a contagious disease that breaks out and starts killing people. and. A very strange, uh, you know, show for Netflix to purchase at this point in time. And it really seems like they're scraping the bottom of the barrel with content, probably because Hollywood has been out of commission for the last little while and uh, they're just taking whatever they can get. But Into the Forest would not recommend. Really bad movie. But this next wave of the pandemic is going to seem like a movie uh, the way it unfolds. So. I just suggest everybody batten down the hatches because it's going to be a long ass winter. And uh, just stay safe, everybody. Thanks for watching, guys. Canadian Prepper out. And check out my winter vehicle preps video coming out later this week. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.